What is up, football fans, UFL fans, but most importantly, Houston Roughnecks fans. Welcome to episode 18 of season three of the Roughnecks Rundown. We got a lot to talk about today, man. We got big news. We got something that sent shockwaves throughout the UFL. I saw somebody tweeted, uh, <laughs> big signing, big cuts. We got bunch of signings. We got retirements. We got Chad Ochocinco news. There's a lot to go over. So without further ado, I'm in the big leagues. So they don't miss me. Balling like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney. I need a bag, bro. Send it through quickly. All right. All right. All right. Like I said, these are the topics we're going to go over today. We're going to talk about free agent signings. We're going to talk about Kenji out, new quarterback in. We're going to talk players retiring. We're going to talk Chad Ochocinco news. Yeah, if you aren't on Twitter and you aren't paying a bunch of attention to that, you're like, Chad Ochocinco, what are you talking about? He has nothing to do with the UFL. You were right until last night. So let's get into this whole thing. Free agent signings. Bunch to look at. Big names. Two quarterbacks. We have two quarterbacks. Everybody was like, Ace, who is our QB3? Who are we going to sign? And I was like, I don't know. Well, we figured it out. So we signed Reed Sennett and Nolan Henderson. We'll get into both of those. We signed defensive back safety, Javon Hicks out of Cincinnati. Big guy, good following online. Can never have too many defensive backs. We signed fullback Ryan Nall out of uh, Oregon State. Good pickup there. He's <laughs> affectionately known by his fans as the Wrecking Nall. Absolutely love that. We have wide receiver Steven Dunbar. We're going to talk about him a little bit. We have linebacker Allende Ace Ely. I love that nickname, man. Don't know why. Then we have offensive lineman Brandon Haskin. You can see him down there. Number 76. Big smile. Two years with the New Jersey Generals. Uh, the dude is a utility player. He can play any position on the offensive line, which is amazing and gives him a huge step up in training camp. I mean, if you can play any position on the offensive line, you have a much better shot of making the team than some other guys who maybe there's two tackles a bit better than them and they only play tackle well. Well, the guy who can play all five offensive line positions is going to beat you out. Then we have offensive line Braylon Jones, which if you've been following the Houston Gamblers with me for the past two years, you recognize that name. Linebacker Marvin Moody out of Tulane. He's got good size. This, he's been out of, the, out of college for a while. This might be, you know, last, last try, last ditch effort to get back into the NFL, and we'd love to see that. And then defensive back Shaman Moore, who most recently was with the Wranglers of the IFL. This dude is not afraid to put his body on the line. Plays defensive back, self proclaims, runs a 4 4 4, 40 yard dash time, lot of fours. He's a good tackler. Uh, his, he's got good zone reading, and we play a lot, a lot of zone in, on defense. So he's a good pickup. Now, let's get into the main ones that I want to talk about. So the first one is going to be obviously quarterback Nolan Henderson. We'll talk about one quarterback, then at the end, we'll talk about the other quarterback. Nolan Henderson, Delaware, 5'11, 202 pounds. Oh, man. Here, let me see if I can get this just a little bit clearer to see. There you go. Now you can see it. All right. So Nolan Henderson, if you look at his stats, the dude was a beast at Delaware. Like he only got better. Aged like fine wine over there. 5'11", 202 pounds. Think Kyler Murray, Drew Brees size. Not huge. This is not, you know, if you were going to build a quarterback on Madden, it's not going to be 5'11", 202 unless you're you know, copying your own height. Uh, he is actually the exact size of my younger brother. So I was trying to think, man, I wonder how big he is. And then I looked at my younger brother today at work and I was like, that is how big Nolan Henderson is. Like almost exactly, maybe a pound different. Uh, second time all passing yards at Delaware. He grew up in Delaware or he grew up in Delaware, wanted to play over there for the Blue Hens, went and now he's a legend. His senior season, he had 3,231 yards, 32 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Whew. 149 rush yards and four rushing touchdowns. The dude put up a lot of stats and he is very, very loved over there. Well deserving. Now, let's get into his highlights a little bit. So, what I really like about this guy is he reminds me of Case Cookus almost. He's very mobile. The dude moves outside of the pocket well. He keeps his eyes downfield, which is very, very important. And he's always looking to get the ball downfield to a player. He's not going to just immediately run, things like that. Uh, I really like him, especially when you are smaller in size, to be able to be mobile, to be able to get the ball down the field, 
is a good thing. Also, his best wide receiver that he had, Gene Coleman the second at Delaware, he's about to throw to him on this play. He's on the rough next two now. So who knows? Maybe Gene even pulled. He was like, you should sign this guy, man. Uh, he had a little stint with the Ravens, and then now Houston Roughnecks. Rough him up, baby. Now, the next player I want to talk about, this is who I think is possibly the best signing that we had in the entire offseason. Linebacker, Allende Ace Ely. Ace Ely, dude. I don't know why I like that nickname so much, but Ace is an absolute beast. 6'3", 233 pounds. That's exactly what you're looking for when you're looking at a middle linebacker. Possibly the best pickup, like I had said earlier. If you look at his senior stats, he had four forced fumbles his senior season. He had an interception. He had nine and a half tackles for loss, 118 tackles total, which was by far the most on his team and like 12th in the nation. This dude's a monster. He's great in the run game. He's going to come downhill. He's going to hit you in the mouth. And he's always, always, always tearing at the ball. The cool thing is, though, even though he's tearing at the ball, he's still hitting very hard and getting people down. Now, uh, I was comparing him to the Honey Badger because the only other person I've ever watched their highlights and just thought to myself, how does he possibly get the ball out like that? So easy. he makes it look easy. The only other person I've watched was Ace Ely and the Honey Badger. They are the only two that I've seen. Let's watch it. Like I said, dude is an absolute dog. Hopefully this video is coming in. Uh, you know, this is him making a play at Georgia. This is him making a play. I don't know against who that is. The dude is great between the tackles. In spring football, people are going to run the ball a lot, especially the first couple weeks, because passing is obviously the harder part of the game. So to have somebody in the middle, we already have Reuben Foster. Now we have Ace Ely. These are guys who can come downhill and are going to make tackles and hit players. Uh, there's a play coming up. Not this one. Possibly the next one, where it really shows his knack at stripping the ball. Ah, uh, Maybe we passed it. I don't know. But the dude's an absolute beast. Oh, it's this one. Here you go. Watch right here. Swing. Just punches the ball out, man. Absolute beast. Very, very, very excited to see him play. Now, moving on to wide receiver Steven Dunbar. I said we were going to talk about him earlier. We're talking about him. 6'3", 202 pounds. Great size for a wide receiver. We don't have that many big, like, go up and get it receivers. We have guys who are kind of mid-range size. Great hands, great body control, but we, we only have one dude who's really a go up and get it wide receiver, and that's Kiki Chisholm from last year. So to have another big guy, very, very nice. He's out of Houston. He's our third player out of Houston. We have Natai Rogers. We have Brandon Braylon Jones. Now we have Steven Dunbar. He may be the toughest wide receiver in the game. Now you see he had 536 yards, five touchdowns, 39 catches. The thing that really, really sticks out to me about this guy is that last year in the CFL, he was on the Edmonton Elks. He is never, never afraid to catch the ball over the middle of the field. You call those hospital passes. Why do you call those hospital passes? Because your receiver is going to get killed, man. He takes it. He takes it on the chin. He takes it like a champ, and he's going to catch the ball. The fact that he holds on to the ball, that he's confident that he's going to catch the ball, look at this play right here. Boom. He knew he was getting contact, and he did not try away. Tough as nails. And when you're coming into a wide receiver room like this one, where these receivers, a lot of them are going into the third year playing together. Tio Redding, Isaiah Zuber, Anthony Ratliff-Williams. These are all guys who, this is their third season playing together, playing on the same team. When you go in somewhere with that kind of consistency, you got to be tough. And this dude is tough. So very excited about Steven Dunbar. He's a name we should watch. Now, offensive line Braylon Jones, not a new guy. He just got picked up, but that's a big news because we didn't protect him. Last season, we picked him up. He was fresh out of college, went into the Dallas Cowboys training camp, and then we picked him up once he got cut in the last wave of cuts after uh, preseason ended. Now, Braylon, he's good offensive guard. Him, Tyler Higby, and Jordan Steckler were all rotating starters on the offensive line. The fact that we're bringing him back is huge because, like I said here, it's essential to consistency. In spring football, consistency is the hardest thing to have. And if you can have it, it's elite. Look at the Birmingham Stallions. The reason that they're that good is because they have all the same players, all working towards the same goal, who have been in the system that long. Very, very important. This last offseason, he singed to Cardinals. He signed to the Cardinals. My bad. And then he got cut, came back to the team. We signed him. Did not protect him. And then when we talk about retirements later, some of these signings will make sense. So we'll, we'll go there in a second. But before we do that, boom, this is the guy I want to talk about. 
quarterback Reed Sinnott. Ooh, this dude's a beast. Uh, he is out of San Diego, not a big school, 6'4", 225. Now, when I was talking earlier, smaller quarterback, this guy, this is who you build in Madden. This is the guy when you're in Madden franchise mode, you're like, that's the dude I want to draft. 3,528 passing yards, 66.9% completion percentage, and a 32 touchdown passing touchdowns at San Diego his senior season. That was his only starting season, his redshirt senior season. Otherwise, he was behind a quarterback who set a bunch of records, came in, was impressive enough in one year to sign as an undrafted free agent in the NFL. He was beat between Miami, Philadelphia, back to Miami, ended up in the XFL because he thought, let's get some more real game tape. The only real like full speed snaps he had was some NFL preseason and his senior season, his retreat senior season at San Diego. So he goes to the XFL, 13 for 19, 97 yards, one touchdown, one interception. You're like, Ace, that's, that's not a lot. Why, why are his stats so, so short? Well, it's because he only played in one game. And here are the highlights from that game. There's a lot of highlights. These are good passes that he's throwing. He's accurate. He stands in the pocket. He's very poised. He has a lot of composure. Composure, And he's a cerebral guy. My biggest thing is that watching him, especially this play that he's about to throw right here, he is watching, looking at the defense, seeing, are they too high? Are they sitting in zone? If I send this guy in motion, are they going to follow? Are they going to sit? Reading the defense, figuring out where he's going to go before the play even starts. And then he's also making his reads. He's improvising. Look at this touchdown. He ran and his receiver, they played scramble dr- drill and caught a touchdown. I like it. Somebody on Twitter said that the reason that he w- stuck in Philly for a while is because the coaches were really impressed with the amount of time he spent on film, the amount of time that he spent in the film room. They thought he was really, really smart good studier, and he could learn. Those are big things. So this is a guy right here. He could take us to a championship. I think it's between Reed Sennett and Nolan Henderson. One of these two is going to take us to a championship. If it's Garrett, Jarrett Garantano, I'll eat my words, dude. I'll sit here. I'll be like, man, I was wrong. But I think it's between these two guys. Now, you're probably like, well, why no Kenji? Kenji was our starter last year. He started three he started three games season one. We drafted him in the inaugural USFL draft. He's been with the team for since the team existed on the gamblers and then moved to the roughnecks with them. Why is he gone? Well, this is the thing that sent shockwaves through the USFL UFL community. And I personally was not that surprised. I have been following this team for two years. Kenji, he's one of those guys kind of felt too cool for school a little bit. Uh, Not a bad dude by any means. You know, I never spoke to him other than the one time I met him in person. I just don't think he vibed with the coaching staff that well. And when that happens, you know, last year, it kind of seemed like they were trying to get Montel Cozart or Terry Wilson to step up and take the role the entire time. I mean, look at the last game of the season. It decided our playoff fate. The biggest drive of the game. We are on the 20-yard line. We need to score a touchdown. We could win the game. They pull Kenji and bring in Montel Cozart, put him in an awful position. He's cold. He hasn't really warmed up. He hasn't played in the game all, but maybe a series earlier. Comes in, throws a game ceiling interception. Devontae Diggs. Why? <clears throat> Why? Why wasn't Kenji in? Why didn't we trust him? It just showed that I don't think the coaches were super high on Kenji. I don't think they trusted him that much, and they really were looking for you know, what's next. And so what's next was Reed Sennett. And I'm all for it, man. I watched that one game with the Brahmas and I think this dude could take us to a championship that I'm also, I I really want to win a championship, but it just, he showed me a lot in that one drive. And that was with the Brahmas who were not very good, especially offensively. So that's my two cents. If you came here because I tweeted last night saying that I was going to give, you know, some insight, that's my insight. I don't think Kenji vibed with the coaches. I don't think he got along with them like as well as he, they wanted him to. They wanted someone who's much more of sit in the pocket, read through his reads, read the defense. Kenji, if his first read wasn't there, he had to scramble and it just, it, he got, it wasn't that great. I don't know. So moving on. That's, what I, that's all I have to say about that. There you go. Now, I talked about retired. Retired, sadly. 
Offensive lineman Paul Adams, I tweeted about this a week or so ago. I heard from a couple different sources that he's retired from football. He was drafted to the Roughnecks, and then for one reason or another, he stepped away. Okay. Now, I've also heard that linebacker Isaiah Pryor, who we picked up last offseason, played with us last season, uh, was more of a rotational guy, not like a full-time starter. Isaiah has also chosen to retire from football. We wish them the absolute best. Uh, Paul Adams retiring may explain why Braylon Jones was brought back after we did not protect him. And then Isaiah Pryor, I mean, we picked up two linebackers this last go around. We picked up Ace Ely and Marvin Moody. It makes a little bit of sense when we're losing a linebacker, we're losing depth. And those are two very, very important positions. So we wish Isaiah and Paul the absolute best. Wish you guys could have stuck around for this season. Now, the last thing, the craziest thing, the weirdest thing. Uh, I know some of y'all are like, the craziest thing wasn't Kenji? Not really. Chad Ochocinco, what does he have to do with the UFL? Well, now possibly something. So, Chad Ochocinco is on a podcast with Shannon Sharp. He brought up to Shannon Sharp that he was like, do you think I could play in the USFL? Probably meant UFL, probably isn't following the merger news. That's okay, Chad. Now, Shannon told him he was going to get his ass busted. Probably. But... Our man, Brandon, a.k.a. the captain, who runs our UFM network account because he's just so, so good at finding stuff to post, he found that snippet of that podcast and he posted it. Now, it started getting traction and I thought, man, this would be really funny to quote tweet as a UFL free agent watch. So here is my UFL free agent watch tweet because, you know, we see James Larson, we see USFL Center, we see... All of these uh, Twitter accounts, they're posting these UFL free agent watches. And I thought it would just be really funny to kind of just mimic the wording and the setup for all of those with Chad Johnson, because it's just kind of ridiculous to think of Chad Johnson, who is a possible NFL Hall of Famer someday, was the 2006 NFL receiving yards leader, six-time Pro Bowler. It's kind of ridiculous to think of him as a UFL free agent, you know, which is a lot of smaller school guys who are just trying to make it into the NFL. So I thought it would be funny. I said he's out of Oregon State, had a stint in the NFL. That went over a lot of people's heads. Everybody was like, a stint? A stint? Yeah, no, no, no crap, man. I know it wasn't a stint. It's a joke. It's because every NF or UFL player, they're like, he had a stint with the Eagles. You know, he had a stint with this team. So it was just the wording that everybody uses. And I thought it would be funny. Then he could be an asset to the team because he doesn't have shoulders, which makes him more aerodynamic. This is something that verbatim I took from him and Shannon Sharp. Because Shannon Sharp said that Ocho Cinco didn't have shoulders anymore because he doesn't work out that much. Ocho Cinco said that just makes me aerodynamic, man. So I posted that. I thought it was funny. Now, it was funny enough that the head coach of the Memphis Showboats, John DeFilippo, yes, that is Coach John DeFilippo. He was not on Twitter last year. He got one this year, doesn't have much followers. I thought it was fake. It's him. I've deep dove into it. We've talked to him a bit. That's him. He said, at Ocho Cinco, get a hold of me. He commented that on both Brandon's UFM post and my quote tweet. The comment under my quote tweet, Chad Ocho Cinco quoted, which is wild because this is a dude I watched growing up. I drafted in fantasy football and suddenly he's quote tweeting a comment on my post. So wild night. Very, very cool. And he said, Coach John, I love you and would be elated to lace him up and compete once again. You'll be hearing from me. So all of a sudden, it went from, I'm making a parody post, because I thought it was funny to think of Chad Ochocinco in the USFL, then now he might be in the UFL? He might be talking to John DeFilippo, come out, do some exhibition games? I don't know. All I know is that this is creating hype around the league. It's incredibly fun. And Chad Ochocinco, who would have thunk? I never would have thought that there would be any interaction in any kind of way between me and Chad Ochocinco, because I'm covering spring football. But here we are. And I'm having a blast. I think it's so fun. But this has been all the crazy news, everything that's happened this weekish. Uh, it's been very fun. If you didn't see my interview with defensive lineman Adam Rodriguez, go check that out. If you watched the first one I dropped and the audio was awful, I tried to fix it. My boy Kenny over here at the network, he tried to help me with it. The audio is much more palatable in the second one. It's a fantastic interview. Love that dude over there. Man, this is. Th- <sighs> We're going to win a championship. I'm saying it right now. The Houston Roughnecks are absolutely, absolutely going to win this championship. They were literally just a quarterback away from being probably the best team in spring football. I think with Reed Sinnott, if you look at a a power ranking that comes out after tonight, we should be top three. And if we're not, they don't know ball. 
I'm saying that right now. <sighs> Whatever. Hashtag rough them up. Hashtag do rig. Man, <laughs> I'm so excited. You guys should be too. I'll see y'all next week. Maybe even before that, we'll see what's happening. Stuff's dropping all the time. Until then, this is Benace. Rough them up. I'm in the big leagues. Told them don't miss me. Balling like Houston. Hey, feeling like Whitney. I need a bag, bruh. 